Welcome back to the Home Lab. And I've got a really interesting question to ask you today, and one we're going to try and answer with an experiment. Is a waterfall hotter at the bottom than at the top? And to do this, we're going to need some lead shot. So today we're asking ourselves the rather odd question, is the water at the bottom of a waterfall warmer than the water at the top? Well, if you think about it, you learnt at school that at the top of the waterfall, anything that's raised up has got a store of gravitational potential energy, and as it falls, it loses that gravitational potential energy and converts it into kinetic energy. But then, when the object hits the ground, in other words, the water hits the pool at the bottom, it converts most of that kinetic energy into heat and sound. Now, did you ever question that bit about heat? You know about the sound, you've heard things that uh, hit the surface or the water hitting the pool at the bottom. But what about the heat? Have you ever noticed that things that are dropped onto a surface warm up? Now, I don't think you have. So, we're going to have to do an experiment to see whether this is really true. And along the way, we're going to work out the specific heat capacity of lead. So let's get started. Well, I'm going to show an experiment today that I've been wanting to show you for ages and ages. And I think it's one that's been rather forgotten and lost in time, but it's really a rather wonderful experiment. What we're going to do is not go out to a waterfall and make measurements. Uh, it's really tricky to do, in fact, though I believe it's possible um, to get an answer to this question. What we're going to do instead is we're going to drop something. We're going to drop some lead shot and we're going to drop it. Here it is in a poster tube and uh, the lead shot's going to fall down the poster tube. So convert its gravitational potential energy to kinetic to heat. Well, that's not really a big enough fall to see whether there's any temperature difference. So we're going to turn over the poster tube and drop it again and again and again and again. And we're going to drop it a hundred times. So the lead shot will have fallen a hundred times the length of the tube. If we measure its temperature at the beginning of the experiment and we measure its temperature at the end of the experiment, we can see if there's any change. But there's a little bit of a bonus here. If we know the mass of the lead shot we put into the tube as well, we can work out its specific heat capacity if it does indeed warm up. OK, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is weigh out the lead shot. So here are some scales, a container to hold the lead shot. And yep, the scales are zeroed. And now here's some lead shot going into the container. And I'm going to weigh out half a kilo, so I've got a little bit too much in there. So I'll pour it out. So I've got 500 grams of lead shot for the experiment. OK, so there's our 500 grams of lead shot. Now what we've got to do is set up our poster tube waterfall. OK, so here's our poster tube and I've cut it down to 62 centimetres. So um, that seems like a bit of an odd number, but I couldn't find a poster tube that was a metre long that would have made life easy but um, 62 centimetres, which uh, takes into account the fact that the end caps here are about a centimetre each uh, and a little bit for the uh, centre of mass of the lead shot. So it's basically when we tip up the tube going to fall 0.6 of a metre, 60 centimetres. So we're ready to go. Well, or are we? The bit that all students forget, and I can forget if I'm rushing, is we need to measure the temperature of the lead shot. So I'm going to pour it into a styrofoam cup. There we go. And I've got a thermometer here and I'm going to put the thermometer into the middle of the lead shot. Leave it a little while to stabilise. I mean, it's probably at the same temperature that the thermometer was at because it's been in the room for quite a while. Um, but in fact, I did uh, get the lead shot um, from somewhere else. Um, so the lead shot may be at a different temperature. So I'll let it stabilise and then we'll see what our starting temperature is do our experiment and then we'll work out if it's got any hotter at the end. So the thermometer has been sitting in the lead shop for a while now 
and the thermometer has stabilized and it's currently reading 22 degrees centigrade. So 22 degrees centigrade is our starting temperature. Okay, now for the bit that can go wrong. So I'm gonna put the lead shot back into the uh, plastic container. And now what I've got to do is pour the lead shot into the tube, ready to start the experiment. Now, you've got to be a bit careful here because the end caps can come off. So I hope the bottom end cap's on tight because I'm not holding it. Okay, now for the fun bit, let's simulate our waterfall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the poster tube, tip it over, let the lead shot fall, do it again and again and again. I'll do it a hundred times. So the waterfall is 60 meters in height or the lead shot has fallen 60 meters. And I'm gonna be careful not to move the tube downwards or move the tube upwards uh, because that would uh, affect the experiment's results as well. So here we go. Here's the poster tube. And if you're a teacher and you've ever taught this, you'll know what's gonna happen next. So you told the students to hold on to the end caps of the tube so the lead shot doesn't go flying all over the room. You've got a whole class doing this and the noise is absolutely deafening. So let's start. One, two, three, four, five, 48, 49, 50, halfway, 51, 52, 53, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. So let's get that lead shot out quickly and see if it's any warmer. So let's get the lead shot quickly straight into the styrofoam cup and see if it's warmed up at all. So here it comes. Take the end cap off. Careful not to lose any. There we go. Get rid of the poster tube and in goes the thermometer and we'll just let that stabilize for a few moments. Well, there we go. We've got the thermometer in the lead shot and it has warmed up only a tiny amount, but it's definitely warmed up. It went from 22 degrees centigrade at the beginning to about 24 and a half degrees centigrade at the end. So the lead shot is definitely warmer after it's fallen 60 meters. So that was a successful experiment. We have genuinely shown that a falling object is warmer when it hits the bottom than when it starts at the top. Now, whether you'd really notice this on a waterfall uh, is questionable, but it does show that some of that gravitational potential energy, which then converts to kinetic, has finally converted to heat. So I think we've shown that water at the bottom of a waterfall could possibly be warmer than water at the top of a waterfall. But we've also got enough data now to work out the specific heat capacity of lead. OK, so let's very quickly work out the specific heat capacity of the lead from this experiment. So we know that the lead at the top of the fall had some gravitational potential energy. I'll write it um, in the slightly simpler ways. GPE, and that's equal to the mass of the lead times by the gravitational field strength times by the height that it's at. And in our case, it's going to be the height that it falls through in the end. So uh, we had um, gravitational potential energy. So GPE equal to the mass of the lead shot, 0.5 kilograms times by the gravitational field strength, 9.8 newtons per kilogram times by the height it fell through so uh, it was 0.6 meters and we did it a hundred times so if you work that out you get a gravitational potential energy of 294 joules of energy lost from gravitational potential energy and converted to heat and sound in the lead shot so all of this energy will say converts into heat. So uh, for specific heat, the amount of energy fed in Q is equal to the mass of the lead shot 
times by its specific heat capacity C times by the change in temperature. I'll go for delta T here. So the energy we fed in was our 294 joules and that must be equal to 0 0.5 the mass of the lead shot times by the unknown the specific heat capacity times by the temperature change well the temperature change ended at 24.5 degrees c and it was previously 22.0 degrees c so that's a change of 2.5 degrees c so solving for C, the specific heat capacity of the lead, C is equal to 294 divided by 0 0.5 divided by 2.5. So C comes out as 235 joules per kilogram degrees C. So it's always good to compare our value with a textbook value and we're way out, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the process was a good one. So 126 joules per kilogram degrees C was the textbook value, but it still makes the experiment worthwhile. So there we go. We got a value from our experiment of 235 joules per kilogram degrees C for the specific heat capacity of lead. And the textbook value is 126 joules per kilogram degrees C. So uh, as with all my experiments, we're miles out, but it doesn't matter. Um, the whole idea is that you get some idea how the experiment is done. And it's a really fun experiment to do. And from back in my teaching days, I remember an extremely noisy one. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that lovely experiment and thanks very much to Audrey for helping me with it as well. So I think we have shown that it is possible that water could be hotter at the bottom of a waterfall, having converted some of its falling kinetic energy into heat than it is at the top, though the likelihood of us noticing the difference is minimal, I would think. Also, on the way, we've been really lucky and been able to calculate the specific heat capacity of lead. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.